let's continue our build up to the 2023 general elections now. Well, joining us is the Delta State Commissioner of Information, Charles Anyogu. Thank you so much for being in the studio tonight. Thanks for having Thanks for joining me. Us. It's, it's nice to be here again. Good yeah. evening, so you are. We are counting down to this uh, campaign's opening or beginning officially, even though we heard from all the president, most of the presidential top major parties today at the NBA conference. Mm -hmm. um, let me begin by asking you, what sort of campaigns do you think Nigerians are in for? You've heard at the NBA conference, these candidates have also been making comments in recent times. What sort of campaigns do you think Nigeria should uh, burst up for? Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. Let me start by first appreciating the Nigerian Bar Association for helping to change the what may look like a paradigm shift. There have been a whole lot of uh, debate, albeit um, some form of uh, entertainment mm. ahead of the election. But now we are beginning to see the real ingredients. The candidates are coming out mm -hmm. to address the issues. There are a whole lot of issues that at the moment affect us as a nation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's high time we began to talk about those issues. And good enough, uh, a number of the candidates have continued to try to touch those issues. Nigerians are very clear on what they need. They want a very united country. They want a country that is uh, safe and secure for them to be able to operate. They want a country where uh, those who want job and are qualified to work are able to also secure such jobs. They also want a country where our youths are very well educated, even as they also want a country where you have powers devolved to the components uh, parts of this country such that the federal government is not uh, over, either overloaded or overbloated in terms of those that you put together to address the number of issues that affect us. Nigerians believe that once some of these issues are addressed, the many other very uh, little issues certainly will fall in place, i.e. the issues of corruption, the issues of... You call um, corruption little. Yeah, why I say it's little because, number one, mm -hmm. if, if you are able to address the many issues of, number one, a functional economy, mm -hmm. for the economy to be functional, you must have been issue, been able to address the issues of wastage. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that one candidate stands very, very tall. Every of the persons who okay. want to contest are very much qualified, constitutionally speaking. Mm. But of course, you know, when you are going into the fo a, a, a particular match, football match, mm. for instance, there is a particular match you bring somebody who is possibly a player in Aimba football club in Aba. Mm. There's another match where you lead somebody who is from Chelsea. They are all footballers, mm. but you know the one that is well prepared for the game that is at hand. This time around, it's a game that will require those that have what it takes to be able to address these many issues that at the moment are us as a country. Well, we'll come to that, but let's even talk about the very foundation of this democracy. Since 1999, it will be the fifth handover of government in this uh, fourth republic. Would you say that the right foundation really has been laid in a way that whoever mm. emerges in 2023 can actually build on what has gone before? Because whatever grandiose dreams and visions that this, you know, candidates have, if the foundation is not, you know, strong enough, it's almost a non-starter of whatever their dreams or visions are. Have we laid that right foundation for Nigeria's democracy to really take off? Well, if you are, used, dividends? If you are used to building structures, for instance, like a house, mm. sometimes you start with the foundation and along the line you discover that you need to make some adjustment. There are areas where you need to introduce some kind of beams that will reinforce whatever you want to put in the superstructure. Then you're able to also further address the substructure. Mm. Let's even start from 1999. Yes, you may want to say that the constitution that was given to us wasn't the best. But to a very large extent, the Obasanjo Article Administration was able to address a whole lot of issues. For those of us who were around during the military era, we saw that from 1999, a whole lot of things started changing. The economy changed for the better, even if we had higher hopes, and we were making a whole lot of progress. I recall even up to 2014, mm -hmm. our economy was growing faster than any of the economies in the entire Europe. Until 2015, out of the fact that we expected more, and of course there is a need for us to expect more, right. and then everybody now felt that there was need to have a change, and that brought us to where we are today. And if you allow me, I also want to, at this point, 
apologize on behalf of uh, one of my very good brothers who came here, who was in your sister, sister station, and did say that he's very proud of what the APC-led government have done in the last seven years. I'm talking about my brother, Festus Keyamo. Mm -hmm. I have to apologize to Nigerians on his behalf because he's my brother from Delta. Mm -hmm. We cannot be proud as debtors of the amount of debt that we have witnessed on account of insurgents or bandits. We can't be proud of the fact that our brothers and sisters are at home instead of being in school. We can't even be proud that our Naira is dancing and bouncing much more than the football in the foot of uh, uh, Okocha. Because today you may want to know the value of the Naira in the morning. In the evening you cannot even predict the value. So we can't be proud of that. And that's why I have to apologize on his behalf. And having said that, I want to say that in the PDP years, a number of things were working in the right direction. Mm -hmm. There were also a number of things that they needed to also touch for the purpose of having a much more uh, progressive country. Right. But perhaps if we had continued along that trajectory, by now we would have been able to make much more appreciable progress. But in the last seven years, the APC-led government at the center engaged a very, very fast reverse gear that had been able to shake mm -hmm. our country to its foundation. Mm -hmm. And we do believe that as we head towards 2023, mm -hmm. and Nigerians will be able to make that choice that will bring us back to a state where we cannot begin to rescue our country. Actually, we have got to a level where we need rescue. Well, the APC will also, I mean, and repeatedly, has accused the past government, the PDP government, of not saving enough, of squandering uh, the nation's the loot. And that's why we find ourselves where we well, are, yeah. because we did not save for the rainy day. So they could also accuse your party of the same things. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you talked about antecedents and things, some things working. So there's, it was not a perfect government, as you have said, for the PDP. It, there were it, things that were working in the right direction. A number of things. And there were things that were not working and didn't work. When you look at the top four, as they are being called, or the major four political parties going into the 2023 elections, there will be a lot of experiences and antecedents because there were either vice presidential, uh, vice president, former vice president, or governors uh, in mm -hmm. their states. Uh, how easy or tough do you think that will be for them? Because everybody's coming to the table with a baggage. I just told you that if you are going to engage in a football match... The Chelsea and the Imba. Yes, you must first of all look <laughs> at what kind of match <laughs> are you going into and then to determine what kind of football... Are you going to leave out the antecedents? Yes, and you need to engage. That antecedent also comes to play. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at these individuals who are contesting, in actual fact, they are all constitutionally qualified to run for the office of the president. The constitution made it clear in terms of age, the fact that they are Nigerians, it is their right. right. But beyond their rights, mm -hmm. we should now begin to look at who has what it takes. And if you ask me, Atiku Abubakar stands very, very tall. It will not be surprised well, not. But, yes, exactly. He stands very, very tall. And I, and I will tell you why yeah, he stands really, very, very tall. Really, this is not even about any particular mm -hmm. candidate. Mm -hmm. The point is, what kind of questions should Nigerians be asking? Are they even equipped enough to ask the right questions? Questions. That is what we have started. In you the know, way that as, as they the would get the kind of answers that I am, they would, I, That they is need. why I'm very, very pleased with what Arise have been doing. And I want to, through you, commend all staff and management of uh, this station. You've been asking the right questions mm. because you are the one to ask those questions on behalf of those Nigerians who may not have that opportunity. And in asking those questions, you need to be able to look at those issues that I have mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that are the major challenges we have today as a country. To be able to look at the antecedents, like she rightly mentioned, mm -hmm. and how these individuals are positioned to be able to address those issues. And the reason why I said that Tiku Abubakar stands tall, that does not mean other person don't have ideas. He stands tall because he has a policy document, unlike others who are still thinking of what to put together. He has been able to, these are the issues, this is how I'm going to address them. He's not just saying there is insecurity. I am going to fight insecurity. Yeah, but we're already seeing yeah. some assaults even in the policy document. No, there, of, there's, there's, of no some, there's no some, there's, there's no some I mean, only today we were told, at least based on what we heard at that NBA conference, he said, look, the ideal thing would be to actually devolve education. Let the states handle education up to the tertiary level. No, 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 no. If, it, no, no. if you go to, if you yeah. go to page 44, of this policy document. This is a policy document, my covenant with Nigeria. What does it say? Page 44, this with this issue you are talking about. He says he's going to work with the states with a view to repositioning the education sector. And the reason why that is so is because, number one, whether, wherever you are going to cite an institution must be in a state. And let me give you an example of data where I'm from. You are very much aware that for over six months now, 
students across the country, uh, uh, teachers and teachers at, at home, the universities. Uh -huh. But you know what? Those in Delta, they are not at home. They are schooling. We have four universities in Delta. Uh -huh. We have two, uh, two polytechnics. We have two colleges of education. Yet, all of them are in session. Right. How did it happen? Because we're able to look at these issues and how it affects our development. And I think we're saying that if at the beginning, mm -hmm. you had schools, the three big schools, this time around, you talk about the University of Ibadan, talk about the uh, Bayero University, Kano, mm -hmm. and of course, um, uh, the, uh, the um, Niger, what's it called? The, Insoka. Uh, Insoka. Mm -hmm. These universities at that time were handled largely by the regions. Mm -hmm. The North, the Southwest, and the Southeast. And they did not just only function, but they were able to deliver and produce very, very credible graduates, uh, uh, persons to the extent. Yeah, now, nobody, nobody, the nobody is begrudging that. But the propensity he, to change, you know, he, he when did, you have no, said this, say, it's he, when you made a statement no, no, and you said, if you no, listen to what he said, you get, no, he only gave you example of the reason why he believes that the states need to have a very, very uh, wonderful uh, uh, impact. Mm. Right. In terms of running an educational system. If you go to the page 44 I talked about, right. you will see where he's saying that we are going to be able to ensure that there is proper funding for the education sector. Mm -hmm. That we reposition the Federal Minister of Education to be able to address issues of policies, issues of uh, coordinating uh, programs in the uh, uh, educational system. If that is the case, why will you not say that the man is just going to take the federal universities and hand it over to the states? It's just a collaborative effort, right. which is part of the issue of devolving powers. Mm. The fact is that our federal government is so overloaded to the extent that it's more operating more as a unitary state than a federal structure. Okay. And that has not helped us. And that is the more reason why, to a very large extent, you see us tending towards socialism rather than having much more capitalist policies, free market, we, 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 free market economy, we are heading towards socialism, and at the end of the day, individuals are not allowed to we, we put in to their God-given potential. We have to go, but I need to answer a yes or no. This is a yes mm -hmm. or no question. Is it going to privatize the federal universities? He didn't say so. Okay, great. So we can hold him up to that. He didn't say so. And He's will going to, he restructure? Will he truly restructure? We're not going to get to 2024, no, no, maybe no, one year no, no, after 2023. Atipu is not running have, away from devolving sure. power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Devolving power. Right. Because at the moment, there are a lot of issues that are being handled at the center. i give you an instance. Buhari has been in government for about seven years now. He has not come to Delta State for any official function in that seven years. Was he invited? Well, what does that tell you? don't need to invite him. You need to be able to have a program that will bring him. But when you are able to empower the states to be able to take care of a whole lot of things, the federal government will be able to concentrate more on the issues of security, on the issues of foreign affairs. How do you explain a situation where the federal government want to begin to ask what is happening in one small clinic okay. in one corner? We'll have to leave it there. So devolution of power is one very, very essential element of the next administration that if Nigeria really want our country to function. Mm. And I'm quite convinced that the rescue agenda that Atiku is talking about we go a long way in addressing the many challenges that bedevil us as a country today. Charles and okay. thank you very much for joining us on News Thanks Night for tonight. Me.